Each winter, humpback whales are seen in the nutrient-rich waters off the coast of Virginia. Typically, the humpback whales show up sometime November to December, but their peak occurrence is usually January through February. The whales' proximity to ship traffic can put them at risk. What we've been seeing a lot recently is a lot of use of the shipping channels, unfortunately, and the deeper waters in and around the channels into the Chesapeake Bay. We've got ships that are moving in this area at pretty significant speeds, upwards of 20 knots in some cases. So we've got a fast-moving ship and a slow-moving whale. Uh, it's kind of a recipe for disaster. The whales return each year, with some individuals staying for weeks or even months. To avoid disturbing the humpback whales or other large whale species, the Navy funds research that assesses their occurrence, movements, and behavior within the region. The Navy's Marine Species Monitoring Program is important because it helps to determine our effects on marine species and the impacts from Navy training and testing. Even all the way over to Naval Station Norfolk and where a lot of the ships come in here, one of the Navy's Atlantic monitoring projects focuses on identifying individual humpback whales that occur in the waters off Virginia. Looks like after that, he went ahead and moved back through the shipping channels and headed down towards those Whiskey 50 Minex area. And how these individuals use these waters while they're in the area. This uh, light gray area here represents our primary study area. It's with the green border. The whitish area with the black border, that is the shipping lanes coming and going into Naval Station Norfolk. The Humpback Whale Project is something we started about three years ago, and uh, the first year it was just visual surveys with photo identification. The second year we added a satellite tagging component. Just a short ride out from the marina brings scientists to waters where the whales forage. We can be a half mile out and we can start finding whales. First we note the location of the whales and the time of day. We record what the behavior of the whales is when we encounter them. We're looking to identify what individual whale we've encountered, so we take a photo of that animal and run it through our catalog to see if we recognize that individual. Just going to double check the ID. Identifying individual whales and noting how often they're encountered and when can help determine the length of residence in the area and if some whales are, in fact, overwintering in these waters. It also allows researchers to track which animals were previously tagged and which remain good candidates for tagging. They're working under the strict requirements of permits issued by the National Marine Fisheries Service, and their first priority is to protect the animal's health and well-being. We want to make sure, one, that they're, they're extremely healthy, two, that we're not going to interrupt what they're doing, if, especially if that's in a feeding, uh, foraging state. The satellite tags are deployed using a pneumatic dart gun. Small, sterilized titanium darts used to attach the satellite tags are designed to be minimally invasive attaching through the cartilage of the dorsal fin or the blubber layer on the whale's back. The tag falls off within a few weeks and the whale heals quickly. Once they've identified the whales to tag, they approach carefully until they have just the right angle for a good shot. Still there, still there, keep going. Through the satellite tagging efforts, the team has begun developing a clearer picture of when the whales may be in the areas of high shipping traffic or Navy training and testing. A high percentage of our animals that have been satellite tagged are spending a considerable amount of time in shipping lanes, about 50% of their time for some individuals and even higher for others. We've seen more than half of our tagged animals move on the west side of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, which I think has been a surprising find for all of us involved. It's not part of the Navy's mission, but it's part of our responsibility to do the best we can to get our job done, but minimize the potential impacts to the environment. The Navy stepped up early on to make sure that they weren't having any detrimental effects over time. The data compiled from this project and projects from other organizations are going a long way toward better understanding of the whale's migrations and use of waters where the Navy conducts training and testing. We actually have quite a collaboration going with researchers up and down the coast. I'd say we know a lot more about humpback whales today than we did five years ago even. That information goes to our environmental impact statements and consultation documents and permit applications that we submit to the National Marine Fisheries Service. Existing mitigation measures include the use of Navy lookouts to alert the bridge watch team that there are marine mammals or sea turtles in the area. We've been on the water before and Navy ships come to a complete stop when they've observed humpback whales and they've remained stopped until the humpback whales have moved past the ship. 
It's all part of a continuing effort to learn more and do more to be good stewards of the sea. It all, the big picture feeds and minimize our interactions, but still get the, the training and testing done that, that's critical. This also means getting the information out to other stakeholders who may have an impact on the whales. By working together, we can all continue to enjoy these magnificent creatures with whom we share the ocean. Sometimes you forget how lucky you are to be on the water and just be out there taking photos and collecting information from, from these animals.